Hey, welcome. Welcome all of you ladies and gentlemen. I know there are going to be some coming in. And, um, and gentlemen, I'm so proud of y'all to be on because, yes, you're welcome. And because 50% of the baby's chromosomes are part of that baby. So we need to help know, know what it takes for pregnancy and how to help their spouse to be pregnant and maintain. Actually, I remember my husband during my pregnancies, he had to keep me kind of hydrated because it was a summer pregnancy. So it's always good for the spouse to know what is recommended and keep her brain because her brain is hormonal at the time. So even for pre-pregnancy, so it's good to, to prep them both. So um, I thank you all again for joining us for this important topic of pregnancy. It's such a vast topic that we divided it into three parts. So tonight is part one. And we're talking about preparing your body to be ready for pregnancy. And then part two, we're gonna talk about what about now that you're pregnant? What are you gonna need, what do you need to do while you're pregnant? In the different stages of pregnancy, what the demands of your on your body it takes. And then part three, we're gonna be talking about postpartum and lactation, which that's another whole ball game there. And um, this topic is so important to Dr. Morris. It's just amazing, you'll, you'll know why. So healthy lifestyles are important, whether you are thinking about pregnancy or not. So, and knowing that 50% of pregnancies are unexpected, then it's better to be prepared. You just never know. So this is how tonight will go. We will do like an interview style with Dr. Morris. And so she's gonna feel some questions and I'll be asking questions from an inquisitive mind perspective as if I was you, one of you. And I encourage you to take notes because the knowledge of Dr. Morris is so generous for her to share that with us is very epic. So if we didn't cover any questions, make sure you write them down in the chat and we'll take some of those at the end. So we're thinking about 25 to 30 minutes and then a few questions after that. So get your pen and paper ready. So here we go. I do have the privileges, the privilege of introducing our guest speaker and, and actually who I call a good friend and I'm honored to call her my friend. Dr. Melinda Morris is a retired obstetrician and a gynecologist of 35 years and is board certified in clinical nutrition for the past 16 years. She's married with four, four grown children, 15 grandchildren, and a beautiful great granddaughter. As a physician, she continues to care for the health and welfare of others, even after retirement from delivering babies. So you know why this is important to her. <laughs> That's all she did a lot is delivering babies. And so now she promotes organic whole food nutrition through Juice Plus, bridging the gap between what you eat and what your body needs for health. So she provides free nutritional and health lifestyle counseling. So with that, let's get started. Are you ready, Dr. Melinda? I'm ready. Yay. <laughs> We're we about got, to bombard you with a bunch of questions. Yeah, yeah we've got a big, big topic. And, yes. um, and our um, participants can put questions in the chat as well. So um, if they if questions come up while, while this is going on, just add them to the chat and we'll address those. Yes. So I'm going to I'm going to minimize the gallery here and start on the slide presentation. So um, we're going to be addressing um, you know, this is part one. So we're doing marching into pregnancy and we're going to emphasize the importance of being healthy before you become pregnant. And really this um, see if you can share the screen then I'll start fielding you with questions and okay so I'm not sharing yet. No. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, here we go. Can you see it now? Yay. We sure right. can. Okay, very good, very good. So with that on mind, you see that pretty belly there and pretty pregnant lady. So I want to ask you, Dr. Melinda Morris, 
Is there a difference between a man and a woman to prepare their bodies for pregnancy? Well, uh, they need, they both need to be in a healthy state. A lot of times they think it, it's just about the, the woman and her diet and her health and making sure she exercises, but the man needs to be healthy as well. Um, his lifestyle, if he's drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, um, taking any illicit drugs, that impacts his sperm production and the healthiness of his sperm. And that sperm is where the, you know, his dose of chromosomes is coming from. So we want healthy chromosomes from both the mother and the father. And, you know, men are different because they're constantly making sperm and creating sperm. Women were born with a complete set of eggs, but men, their, um, their lifestyle, their environment, their exposure to toxins, is actively having an impact on the sperm that they're producing. So uh, even the hot temperatures, um, the type of underwear they wear, uh, you know, all those things are impacting um, how fertile they're going to be. So men um, are involved in this process as well. And plus, if mom has to be on a good, healthy diet, then dad should be as well. Um, you know, I know some dads develop that dad bod <laughs> body. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know i didn't know about the underwear part <laughs> that's pretty oh, yeah. interesting don't, don't wear tidy whities that uh, <laughs> decreases sperm count so uh it's good to know <laughs> all right our second question is regarding contraceptives you know that's that's the nowadays thing and sometimes yeah. doctors prescribe it just to get the little young girls hormonal balance quote, quote unquote so what are the different um type of contraceptives and what's the time frame to stop using them before you're considering pregnancy? Well, it all, um, it all depends on the type that you're on. Um, birth control pills, uh, they're eliminated um, from the body rather quickly. So you can stop birth control pills. I mean, you can even miss a pill and get pregnant. I mean, that's, that's how quickly those pills are being um, uh, metabolized and eliminated. But you want to be off your pills and you want to have a cycle on your own off the pills um, before you try to become pregnant. And I tell I told ladies, don't try if you're not ready to be pregnant. You know, a lot of uh, ladies assume it's going to take a while for them to get pregnant. And sometimes the first time they try, they get pregnant. So you, you wanna have everything in place and, and be in your healthy state. You already wanna be on your supplements. Um, you need to be starting those at least three months before you conceive um, because you, know, you wanna be in the healthiest state when you conceive because before you even realize you're pregnant that um, little embryo has developed four, five, six weeks. Uh, you know, organs are developing at that time. The brain is beginning to develop. The heart is beginning to develop. So if you're not in a healthy state when you conceive, that can impact the entire pregnancy and your pregnancy outcome. Yeah, you'll need to unmute, Sakura. Right, thank you. <laughs> so the type of contraceptives is important, like the, you know, regular pill versus the, I, the IUDs or... Yeah. Now the, yeah, the IUDs, those are the intrauterine devices. Um, you know, they can be removed, but you want to wait a cycle or two before you try to get pregnant because IUDs create inflammation inside the uterus. Mm -hmm. And the inflammation they, they can create can increase your risk for a miscarriage. So you want to have two, you know, one or two normal cycles after that IUD is removed. Um, so that the uterine lining will be as healthy as possible to accept that fertilized egg. Now with the depo Provera injections, it can take up to nine months before you ovulate after discontinuing the depo Provera injection. So um, it can, that's gonna take longer. Um, the depo Provera mm -hmm. is very effective. It's 99.9% .9 effective. It really suppresses the, the hormones that induce ovulation and it is slowly removed from the body. So, um, you know, if you're on Depo Provera wanting to conceive, um, just realize it may take longer um, because that 
ovulation will be suppressed sometimes for several months, even up to six, nine months after, after you discontinue the injections. Oh, wow. Yeah. What about, let's see, if you already had babies, does your body already know what to do? Or is it a, you know, a preparation uh, take a little different um, when you're trying to get pregnant again? Well, it's, it's actually very easy to get pregnant um, after a delivery um, because your body kind of is in pregnancy mode. And I took care of girls that by the time they came back for their six week postpartum exam, they were already pregnant again. So, um, you know, so the body, um, once you've had one pregnancy, the body does remember, and uh, sometimes it's easier to conceive, but you have to remember that uh, you may have a lot of deficiencies from that first pregnancy. Uh, if you weren't on a healthy diet, if you weren't taking an adequate amount of supplementation, you're going to have deficiencies that are going to carry over into that next pregnancy, and you want to correct those deficiencies with, you know, whole food and supplementation so that you're in the best condition possible for that second pregnancy. Um, the, during a pregnancy, the baby takes what it needs from the mom. And if mom isn't replacing all those vitamins, minerals, micronutrients, then mom is going to have deficiencies. And, and what about want... iron? You had mentioned something about iron. Well, iron is very, very important for the health of the mom and for the health of the baby. And, you know, your blood supply, your red blood cell count actually doubles during pregnancy. So you need a large amount of iron so you can have an um, adequate blood supply. And the majority of women are actually anemic. There's not a lot of iron in the standard American diet. And unless you're eating, um, you know, a lot of green leafy vegetables, spinach, kale, uh, you know, or red meats um, have quite a bit of iron in them. Um, the vast majority of women um, recently with, with pregnancy are actually pretty anemic. I mean, severely anemic in some cases. And they're only going to become even more anemic as the pregnancy progresses because the body is trying to double its blood count. So you really want to correct uh, anemia before getting pregnant. Uh, anemia during pregnancy can increase your risk for infections, uh, for low weight babies, um, and for um, pregnancy com complications. So it's, wow. it's a very serious problem. Oh, my goodness. A little, one little iron can do that much difference. Yes. Uh, what about, can you explain the difference between fol uh, folic acid and folate? Because that's uh, a lot of words that come around. And does it affect the baby? And do you need to have it before pregnant? Uh, you, well, folic acid is manufactured. Um, folate is your vitamin B, uh, B9. You hear about vitamin B6, vitamin B12. Well, folate is vitamin B9. And... It's naturally occurring in many of our whole foods, especially green leafy vegetables. Um, but when you, you know, purchase your prenatal vitamins, uh, the, um, they put folic acid in there because that's chemically created. And then the body converts it to folate, which is the, the form that's actually used in the body. And B9 is incredibly important um, to a lot of metabolic processes in your body. Uh, the neurochemistry in your brain requires uh, B9. And if there's a folate deficiency, it can put the baby at risk for spina bifida and uh, neurological um, problems. So it is recommended that women start on um, folic acid uh, at least three months before they conceive so that there's no deficiencies and they have good normal um, uh, folate levels uh, when they conceive. So oh, it doesn't wow. impact the neurological development of the baby. Wow. Interesting. So that's why it's good to be prepared, your body, so then you won't have to start at a deficiency to get you up. So you already answered my next question, which where are your sources of folate? And you said green leafy vegetables. Yeah, yeah green leafy vegetables. Um, you know, if you're 
you know, uh, the American diet, unfortunately, doesn't really meet the nutritional requirements today. Most people do have deficiencies. You know, if you're just uh, eating mac and cheese and uh, Chick-fil-A, uh, you're not getting the nourishment that your body actually needs. You may be getting plenty of calories, but you're not getting uh, all the vitamins you need, all the minerals you need, and the micronutrients. Those are from fruits and vegetables. And so you said B9, right? Is that part of the beef complex? Yeah, that's part of the beef complex. That's your that's your folate is is B9. Okay. So um, so what about stress? Is pregnancy a type of stress? Well, pregnancy is a stress on the body. Um, it's an oxidative stress. Uh, it can uh, damage, you know, oxidation as a result of uh, metabolism and your body's metabolism definitely increases during pregnancy. Um, you know, you're rubbing up those engines, they're working, um, you know, at, at full throttle. And when, when the more metabolism you have, uh, the more what they call free radicals you produce, and these free radicals can damage tissues. And that's why you, you want to take antioxidants. They talk about that because antioxidants scoop up those free radicals and keep them from damaging your tissues. And so your antioxidants are in your fruits and vegetables, especially in your fruits. Uh, your colored fruits are, are high in your antioxidants. Also something that's very important for pregnancy are your um, omega-3 essential fatty acids. Um, they're called essential because your body can't make them. You actually have to consume them. And they're vitally important um, for, uh, as an antioxidant, they're vitally important for the development of the baby's brain and neurological system. They've actually done studies that show if there's deficiencies in, in the omega-3s. Uh, and you may see um, supplements for EPA, uh, DHA. Those are your two main uh, essential omega-3 fatty acids. Um, that actually help with the neurological development. Um, so they're beneficial for the mom and, and for the baby, but those are essential. So um, you need to make sure that you're getting um, plenty of your omega-3 um, fatty acids as well. Wow. So is that, I guess, stress will be the same thing because we always hear this new word, you know, it's oxidative stress. So oxidative stress is produced in pregnancy and you would need different kind of nutrition at different stages of your pregnancy, right? Well, you just need more of the good stuff. Uh, you know, as the pregnancy goes along, you need more and more of the uh, supplements, the nutritions, the micronutrients, uh, you know, in the first trimester, um, maybe just normal amounts. But once you get in the second semester, you actually should be increasing the um, your nutrition your supplementation and in the third trimester um, uh, it needs to be increased again uh, and you know labor and delivery is a very high oxidative stress situation anytime you're in a in intense exercise situation uh, that's oxidative stress and then that doesn't even mention the environmental stress that we're all dealing with stress at work, stress at home, um, psychological stress also changes your body's chemistry. So, um, you know, the least stress that you have on your body, the better. And stress can even prevent you from conceiving um, because of the um, adverse products that stress is producing. It actually produces bad chemicals in your body. It, it produces the bad cholesterol. Uh, it impacts your brain's function, um, you know, so just stress alone um, can change the chemistry of your body. So you mentioned, you know, exercise, and they say that pregnancy and exercise, they, you need to exercise during pregnancy, but you had mentioned in our conversation that not to start one right away, like if you're running a marathon at the beginning, but you can if you're, if you have been exercising for a while, is that correct? Yeah. Well, whatever exercise routine you've been doing um, before you become pregnant, you can continue during your pregnancy. You don't want to just start exercise for the first time once you become pregnant. Um, you know, there are some pregnancy conditions where uh, 
um, you know, you may have to limit some of that activity, but at least um, daily walking 30 minutes, you know, kind of a brisk walk uh, where you're increasing your heart rate, um, that aerobic exercise, uh, that's what you need uh, for a healthy pregnancy because, you know, basically uh, to get through your pregnancy and deliver that baby uh, is like running a marathon. You've got to be in good shape for that. And <laughs> um, you, you need to be training for that. And, um, you know, I've had girls in uh, trying to deliver a baby and you say, take a deep breath and push. They've never taken a deep breath and held a deep breath before. So you're trying to teach them just how to hold their breath so they can push the baby out. You know, it's, it's so, um, no, you, uh, you know, you need to consider, you know, that your training as an athlete to, to deliver this baby. So you want to, and whatever exercise you've started, if you can run five miles a day before you get pregnant, there's ladies that continue that throughout their pregnancy, but you don't want to start an intense exercise program for the first time you know, after you become pregnant. So you've got to totally kind of, sense. Yeah, you've got to condition your body. So does your weight matter? Weight definitely matters. And that's probably the biggest issue uh, that women face today. Um, you know, the there is an obesity epidemic in the United States. Uh, almost 40% of the American public is obese. And this has a direct impact on pregnancy and pregnancy outcomes. Uh, and it can even have an impact on the ability to conceive because fatty tissue produces hormones and it produces hormones that can prevent ovulation. And there's a condition called polycystic ovarian syndrome. And a lot of times that's the case. Um, you know, women are unable to get pregnant, but if they lose weight and get back down to a normal rate, all weight, all of a sudden they're ovulating and they get pregnant. So uh, obesity has increased all the risk factors for pregnancy. It increases your risk for gestational hypertension, having high blood pressure during the pregnancy, gestational diabetes, being diabetic, um, it increases the risk for cesarean section because the fatty tissue fills up the pelvis and there's not enough room for the baby to deliver. Um, so, and you can't start dieting once you become pregnant. So it's really ideal, um, you know, three to six months if you're considering a pregnancy and you feel like you need to lose some weight to do that before you become pregnant. Um, yeah, we have wow. almost, almost a 50% C-section right now. Uh, and a lot of it has to do because of the uh, obesity rate. Yeah, also, I never really put the two together about the fat being in the way. Yeah, it, it, def, it, blo it blocks the baby to the point that the baby can't get through the birth canal. Um, I'll also um, speak about you know, we have a pretty high fat content in the American diet. I mean, that, that's contributing to some of the obesity. And if you have a history of gallbladder disease, you definitely want to monitor your diet during pregnancy. Pregnancy makes gallbladder disease worse. And a high fat diet makes gallbladder disease worse. And uh, in pregnancy, you, you're producing very high levels of estrogen, which causes gallstones. And it's not uncommon now uh, to see women coming in uh, with severe gallbladder disease that requires them to get their gallbladder removed while they're pregnant, which puts the pregnancy at risk. And it's direct, directly related to the high fat content of the American diet. So, um, you know, that's something you need to be aware of. Um, I, I actually, there is a condition, I named it wingitis. These ladies would come in at night. Uh, they'd gone to one of these restaurants and eaten a whole plate of buffalo wings, and they were having so much pain. I mean, they were, I, we had to get a gallbladder ultrasound on all of them. Some had stones, some didn't have stones. Sometimes you just gave them antacids and it went away. But you know, you can't tolerate eating some of those foods that you were eating when you weren't pregnant after you become pregnant. And so Does that yeah. produce uh, early premature labor or no? No, just misery. 
just absolute misery. And, misery. <laughs> and gallbladder disease during pregnancy is misery um, because you don't want to have to operate. You don't want to, you know, even if they've got gallstones, uh, if you don't have to because they're pregnant. So ladies really watch the amount of fat that you're eating. Um, you know, it, it causes so many adverse health effects, you know, and, you know, and the effect that it has on the cardiovascular uh, system and risk for uh, heart disease. And, you know, heart disease is still the number one killer in the United States. So, you know, really look, take a, a look at your diet. Uh, I recommend a three-day diary where you're writing down everything you eat and drink for three days, because sometimes you don't even realize the calories you're eating, the amount of sugar you're eating, uh, the fat, fat content of your foods, start reading labels uh, so that you actually, you know, know how much of these that you are eating. So, um, and the sodas that were, you know, that that's just pure sugar water. And even the artificial sweeteners still raise your insulin levels. They did studies showing that on Diet Coke, you still gain weight. Uh, so, you know, that, um, that, that, really has, uh, that really has an adverse effect. Um, start drinking more water. You need, you need pure hydration, um, less of the caffeine, less of the sodas. Sodas have high acid content. They, it leaches the calcium out of your bones. You need the calcium for your babies. Uh, if you're not a milk drinker or you, you have um, lactose intolerance, you're going to need to consider calcium supplementation so that you are getting enough calcium. And the majority of Americans are deficient in vitamin D. And vitamin D is incredibly important. Uh, it's part of your immune system. It allows your body to absorb the calcium from your diet. Uh, and I actually recommend, you know, talking to your your personal doctor, tell them you're considering a pregnancy, get your vitamin levels checked, get your thyroid checked, um, and uh, see what you are deficient in so that you can correct those deficiencies before you conceive. Wow, amazing. You already got to my other questions, so that's good. You just, we're almost uh, closer to the end. So um, my next question was, um, if you if you have um, is there a relationship between your mother's pregnancies and and yours? Well, some, sometimes um, you know difficulties in pregnancy can run in families. So you know if your mother had difficulty, you may have some of those same difficulties. Um, not necessarily, but it's something to be aware of, and it's something to discuss um, with your physician. And another thing is, you know, some women are on medications for hypertension, diabetes, or thyroid disease uh, when they're considering um, a pregnancy. And you want to make sure that, you know, one, your conditions are well controlled, your blood pressure is well controlled because pregnancy is going to increase your blood pressure levels. Um, you know, if you're diabetic, you want to make sure that you're following your your diet well, your blood sugars are in good control because blood sugar, high sugars are toxic and they will increase your risk for a miscarriage. Um, they're toxic to the fetal tissue. So you've got to get your diabetes well controlled. Uh, and if you're on thyroid medication, some ladies stop taking it, um, don't feel like they need it. But if you have an abnormal thyroid level, that's going to impact uh, your ability to get pregnant and also um, your pregnancy and, and even your baby's thyroid function. So, um, you know, so and you some ladies, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And don't, don't stop taking your medication when you get pregnant. Um, now on some blood pressure medications, you need to let your doctor know that you're considering a pregnancy because some blood pressure medicines need to be switched to a different medication when you're pregnant. But if you're on thyroid medication, your diabetes medication, you need to stay on those. Um, it's so you can't be stop cold turkey either, right? That's well, no, good. no, because, um, you know, it's so I mean, if you stop your medication, now you have abnormal, abnormal levels. So it's going to be worse on you, worse on the baby, worse on the pregnancy. Um, you know, sometimes they're scared. Should I keep taking my medicine? But yeah, you want you want to take your medicine to make sure your blood pressure is under control, your diabetes, and and thyroid medication.
Yeah. So since you brought up all the complications, I know there's some that is preeclampsia and and you're gonna help me with this one. Uh, yeah, hyper the, hy the hyperemesis. Hyperemesis. You know, those, yeah, and those gestational are... diabetes. We just you talked about the the uh, hypertension, anemia, and you mentioned already the thyroid. So can you talk a little bit of what each one means? Yeah. Not, I used to get a, a confused preeclampsia and toxemia and. Well, um, you know, preeclampsia and toxemia. Um, you know, are basically the same. Um, you can have kind of, quote, mild preeclampsia. Um, mm -hmm. You know, toxemia uh, is actually the severe form of preeclampsia where seizures have occurred, okay? So, you know, there is kind of a gradient there um, where it can be mild versus, we used to say moderate to severe. Now it's pretty much just mild and severe. Toxemia means you've actually had a seizure. Um, from the severity of it. Wow. And, um, and nutritional deficiencies can increase risk for that. Um, if you had preeclampsia with your first pregnancy, you have a 25% chance of having preeclampsia with your second and subsequent pregnancies. Um, gestational hypertension means that you had normal blood pressure before you got pregnant, but you developed hypertension during the pregnancy. Sometimes that will go away after you deliver the baby. Some women remain hypertensive um, after that delivery, and then they just have to be managed for chronic hypertension. Um, the same with diabetes. Some ladies uh, have normal blood sugars, um, but once they become pregnant, then they become diabetic and have to be managed for diabetes during the pregnancy. And it can take... Um, you know, after the delivery, it can take six to eight weeks for blood sugars to come back to normal. In some cases, they never do, and women remain diabetic after those pregnancies. Uh, oh. hyper, hyperemesis is the condition where they have severe nausea and vomiting. I mean, 80, almost 80% 80 of women have some nausea with pregnancy, um, but these ladies, uh, it's severe enough that they're losing weight, they're malnourished, um, they're dehydrated. Um, they're requiring multiple hospitalizations for IV fluids and, and medication to, to manage the nausea. And um, it's very common for that to occur with, with each pregnancy. So, so I got two more, more questions. So with that, as far as you said, miscarriage, because they could also miscarriage because they're, they're just nausea too, too long during their pregnancy, not enough. So... Uh, is that going to be a different protocol when they're miscarriage to get pregnant again versus anybody that hasn't had miscarriage? Well, 20% um, of normal of pregnancies miscarry. Um, so one in five pregnancies will end in miscarriage. And that is because when the egg and the sperm um, combined, the chromosomes didn't match up appropriately. And, um, you know, the little embryo uh, to fetus has abnormal chromosomes, uh, which are not compatible with life. So the vast majority of miscarriages occur because of that. It's nothing anybody can control. It's, it's nothing, you know, it just happens by chance. So that happens in 20% of pregnancies. Um, and that doesn't mean that the next pregnancy may be perfectly normal. Um, when doctors get concerned is when there's been two or three spontaneous miscarriages in a row, or there's pregnancy losses in the second trimester. Um, the early miscarriages, they usually occur before 12 weeks of pregnancy, um, but if pregnancy loss is occurring like 14 to 16 to 20 weeks of pregnancy, um, or there's multiple first trimester miscarriages, then that needs a, ref a referral to a um, infertility specialist. Um, there could be some genetic um, problems with either the mother or the father that's contributing to that. There could be some uterine anomalies that the woman has um, that, that um, needs to be corrected that's contributing to that. So, um, you know, there's reason to do additional evaluation uh, at that point in a referral um, to infertility.
So if they've had a miscarriage during their pregnancy and they, they do certain procedures to help you keep that baby, can you still be able to do exercise and take care of it or you have to really kind of be bedridden? Well, um, you know, some ladies have, um, you know, what they call cervical incompetence where the cervix is weak. Uh, it won't stay closed during the pregnancy. So that leads to a miscarriage, usually in the second trimester, um, because that cervix just starts to, to dilate before it should. Um, but they can treat that with a, a surgical procedure called a cerclage, where they actually just put kind of a band around the cervix to hold it closed and hold it tight so that they can carry their baby to term. And, um, you know, women used to have to just go to complete bed rest because that was the only treatment um, that we could really offer. Um, but with a lot of the newer treatments, um, they can wear pessaries, they can have a cerclage and, you know, and then they can, you know, be on their feet, they can continue to work, they can, you know, do um, some walking, that sort of thing. I mean, not heavy weight lifting or anything like that, but, you know, you want to stay stay in as much shape as you possibly can because going to bed is is going to make you weak and um and then when the time comes to to deliver the baby you may not have the strength to do it so you want to maintain at least um you know some 30 minutes of walking it's a little aerobic exercise just no heavy lifting or straining that sort of thing all right so will nutrition help that at all to help it be, you know, more strong? Well, nutrition is going to help everything and um, whole food nutrition. And you can't get all the supplementation you need just out of prenatal vitamins. You've got to, you've got to combine that with uh, whole nutritious food. Uh, your hey, body you get to my topic. I like yeah, that. Because the, the body oh. actually absorbs nutrition from food better than it does uh, from supplementation. So you really need a combination of both. And there's nutrition, there's micronutrients you're going to get from whole food that are not supplied in the vitamin and mineral supplements. Yeah, speaking of supplementation, I know um, doctors and you yourself have prescribed uh, prenatal vitamins because we don't get it in our food any, anymore. And we're so proud of our sponsor, Juice Plus, because it is a whole food supplement. So uh, we wanted to take a few minutes to talk about a little bit about that, how it can help you prepping your body towards pregnancy. So Dr. Morris, can you uh, move to the next slide? I'll be real honest, my slides are not moving for some reason. Oh, wait, here we go. Here we go. Uh, there we I go. Figured, I figured out how to move them. Um, this is why you need whole food in your diet and not just vitamins, uh, supplements, because an apple has 10,000 micronutrients in just one apple. And it shows all the different vitamins, the minerals uh, that your body needs. And these are essential. So, um, you know, it would be very difficult just based on supplementation to really correct all these deficiencies and provide all the food and fiber uh, that your body needs. So that's why you always want to have a whole food, healthy, nutritious diet in addition to any additional supplementation that you're doing. And the, um, and the food doesn't have the nutrition as it used to have either, right? No, it doesn't, unfortunately. And, uh, you know, and the fast food industry has taken over basically the nutrition for Americans. And there's very little nutrition there. There's a lot of calories. I mean, it fills you up and you don't feel hungry, um, but you're not getting the nutrition that your body needs. And so the vast majority of Americans have nutritional deficiencies. Um, and what's what's so wonderful about Juice Plus is that, you know, it's a whole food, um, really just whole food nutrition in capsule form. Um, there's the, the, the capsules, the fruit, vegetable, and berry um, capsules, and you're getting over 35 uh, fruits and vegetables in those capsules. 
uh, and just to buy 35 fruits and vegetables and try to eat those on a daily basis would be very difficult. Um, and especially as uh, the grocery supply is diminishing, uh, you know, our access to, to healthy foods um, may be uh, very difficult to obtain. So, um, and the other product that is so beneficial is the Omega Blend. Um, because that's going to provide those essential uh, omega-3 fatty acids that the baby needs for neurological development. Um, but you're also getting the omega-5, 6, 7, and 9, which also have their own benefits um, for health. Um, Is that the next the one? Oh, you need to share again your screen. All right, am I back? Am I sharing? Yes, yes, oh, you just need okay. to put it on uh, presentation mode. Um, uh, slideshow, where it says slideshow, the top, yeah. and next to animations. It's kind of hiding underneath this, um, this panel. Um, oh, wow. Go to go to the right, a little more to the right. Can you see animations or no? No, I can't see anything. Um, okay, let's see. Maybe maximize the, the screen at the top. Well. I've got all sorts of things popping up now that I don't need. Um, here we go. Here we go. We're back. All right. Can you see? Okay. Yes, we can. Yeah, but um, this shows the 35 uh, fruits and vegetables in the capsules, and then the Omega blend is all plant-based. Um, it's from like the, pa the pomegranate seeds, raspberry seeds, uh, also the algae uh, is the, the source of the Omega-3, so you're bypassing the fish. And um, this is a, a wonderful product, decreases inflammation, has high antioxidants, and then along with the omegas. So it's, um, it's, it's very helpful, helpful. And then the, the complete shakes are the um, protein-based shakes. And they have, they're packed full with additional minerals and vitamins, high in protein. Uh, and for ladies that, you know, have hyperemesis or don't feel like eating just regular food right at the beginning, uh, these shakes are a wonderful source of protein and nutrition. We have a new product called uh, Juice Plus Perform that has 25 grams of protein in it. Um, it's actually for athletes. It'd be wonderful for pregnancy as well. Uh, high in your B vitamins, uh, your vitamin D, and a large amount of protein. So, um, you know, this, this is great additional nutrition uh, that you're not going to have in your regular diet that will definitely be beneficial to your pregnancy. So a regular, preg uh, anybody that's looking into pregnancy, just taking the two of each is good enough until you're pregnant. And when you're pregnant, you add just an extra one as your body demands more, correct? Yeah, and you, you should increase your supplementation as the pregnancy progresses because you're going to need more nutrition in your second trimester. Um, you know, your first trimester is up to about 12 weeks of pregnancy. Uh, your second trimester is up to uh, 28 weeks of pregnancy. And then your third trimester um, is from 28 to 40 weeks of, of gestation. So with each uh, subsequent trimester, 
Uh, the demands on your body are increasing. The baby is growing. So you need to increase the amount of nutrition uh, that you're providing. Awesome. Well, we're coming to the end of our presentation and our interview with Dr. Morris. And let me see. I'm going to go ahead see, and do we, have, do we have any chat questions we need to address? Let me see. Uh, okay, so uh, not not yet. Anybody have any questions that maybe they want to uh, block? Uh, I mean, unmute yourself and talk. Let's see. I'm going to stop sharing. So. Yeah, Thank I you, Dr. Melinda. I, I, I think like share. you covered. I think you covered a lot. I almost don't, don't have, have any questions. questions. All my, all my <laughs> questions were answered, so thank you. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. That's awesome. Yes, and we're, we're very, very proud of all of you who attended. And those who are actually going to see the recording, we're going to have our second part is going to be March 24th on Thursday at 8 o'clock. And then our last one, which will be the postpartum and lactation, we're going to do it in April and we're going to have it in person. So just stay tuned and we'll, you know, go ahead and, and private message us or contact the person that invited you. And uh, so we can get you all that information. But for right now, thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Morris, for your awesome expertise. I felt like I can actually teach somebody else too. At least I'm, I won't be so lost. So you're you're awesome to get us to our level of understanding, simplifying such a hard subject. <laughs> so we're looking forward to getting you more informed of what you need when you're pregnant. So tune in and thank you again for joining us tonight.